What is up everybody? Welcome back to the Eclectic Beard Disco Round. Be looking at the first Medal of Honor ever recorded. Uh, this right here is, uh, yeah, this is something that the fact that a deed that was worthy of the Medal of Honor was able to be recorded because a lot of times this is awarded after someone's gone. Like, it's just, that's the way it, that's what happens a lot of times. The, the feat of bravery and a lot of times selflessness that's required to actually be awarded this normally it leads to someone's death. So the fact that it was recorded, it's pretty impressive. So yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. A U.S. Air Force combat controller and the SEALs are attempting to rescue their lost teammate. You'll watch Chapman's heroic actions as he saves the lives of his entire SEAL team and then another 18 members of a quick reaction force earning America's highest award, the Medal of Honor. Chapman and the SEALs exfil their MH-47 helicopter. John is the second individual to exit and immediately moves in the direction of the summit. He can be seen moving off to the right of the screen, alone. The team is taking heavy fire from every direction, as indicated by the arrows, as Chapman begins engaging targets. You can see spent cartridges ejecting from his M4. Chapman then begins closing with the enemy, forcing his way upslope in knee and thigh deep snow. The fact that this was. See, that's one of the things with modern technology uh, on the battlefield, because uh, it's, it's. This was caught by a Predator drone. Now, this seems to be. Um, It's almost like I don't I don't know because it's of course it's not not going to be like full HD and stuff like that. This is looks like a, a form of I don't know, almost night vision maybe. Not sure what this type of like the 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 how how it was recorded. There we go. He is constantly under fire as he does this. Chapman's team leader begins to close on... Maybe infrared or something like that, but you can clearly see... One, two, three... It's like four, five... Like, you can you can see little the, the black dots over here that take a represent... ...as he does this. And Chapman's... Oh, there we go. One, two, three... Like, you, you can see... So they're definitely, they're in it. Team leader begins to close on Chapman, following his trail through the snow. The dark mass above Chapman is a fortified bunker containing two enemy fighters, each armed with AK-47s, who are firing down on the team in the darkness. This bunker will come to be known as Bunker Number One. To the left of the tree and Bunker One is another gray mass. This is a rock outcropping that came to be called the Boulder. Between Bunker 1 and this boulder can be seen the body of slain seal Neil Roberts, the man Chapman and the others are attempting to recover. Chapman, still alone and closest to the enemy, pauses to engage targets as his team leader follows him, but never actually catches up with him. Chapman, on his own, now makes the decision to charge directly into the enemy bunker, despite withering point-blank fire. Chapman, now literally on top of the enemy, engages the two combatants and kills them, saving the lives of the remaining SEALs. He does this from a distance of no more than 10 feet. These actions, by themselves, earned him his first Medal of Honor. He then climbs into and takes control of the bunker. Having cleared the immediate threat, Chapman is then joined by his team leader in Bunker 1. You can then see Chapman and his team leader engaging the next bunker, known as Bunker 2, which is situated to the left edge of the screen. This bunker, manned by a handful of Chechen and Uzbek fighters, also contains a heavy PKM machine gun, hand grenades, and rocket-propelled grenades. So he takes on and kills two by himself in the first bunker, and now they've got multiple which more than two people in the other bunker 
that still has a direct line of fire on them because it showed the body right here between the bunker and the boulder. So you got this bunker back here and they're still on a direct line of fire. It's not a good situation. John Chapman is shot twice at this time in the torso and collapses, incapacitated. You are now looking at a new angle and at the left of the screen can be seen the two-man fire team and team leader on top of the boulder. Just below it is Bunker 1 with the mortally wounded Chapman. One SEAL can be seen firing his modified M60 machine gun from the hip into Bunker 2 on the right side of the screen until he is struck by grenade shrapnel and tumbles 10 feet off the top of the boulder, collapsing at the feet of his team leader, thus setting off a chain of events that would lead to the SEALs abandoning Chapman on the summit. The wounded SEAL and the team leader can be seen conferring about his injuries. So they get a, so he gets abandoned. Go in to retrieve a fallen comrade. Take out two that are the first line of defense in a bunker. Hit twice in the torso. Golly, dude. Moments later, the SEALs decide to retreat from the summit because their position is untenable in the face of continued massive enemy firepower. They can be seen moving toward the right side of the screen and passing the body of Neil Roberts. Unfortunately, the SEALs do not pass John Chapman, who is above them and inside Bunker 1. This angle shows three SEALs in a triangle. The larger black heat signature is a smoke grenade. Just to its left is a donkey and dead Al-Qaeda fighter killed by Chapman. The steepness of the mountain can be seen as the seals begin to slide down the near sheer face. The team leader, desperate for relief and now with two wounded teammates, asks for uncontrolled airstrikes from an orbiting Air Force AC-130 gunship. The impacts you see are from 105mm howitzer rounds being fired onto the ridge top in order to save the remaining SEALs. Because neither the SEALs nor gunship know Chapman is alive, he is experiencing these detonations from his position. What? So he's... They leave both of the one that they come to retrieve and him and now... Bro... Oh. At approximately 5.20 in the morning, Chapman recovers and begins to engage the enemy. Bunker 1 is on the right side center of the screen and Bunker 2 to the left near the screen center. It will never be known what caused his incapacitation and recovery. Of the two rounds that originally... Two rounds to the body could cause incapacitation, just saying a shock to the body. ...only wounded him, at least one was mortal and at this time he is experiencing severe blood loss and shock. Despite that, he begins his one-man stand against two dozen enemy combatants. During this time, Chapman initiates a series of radio calls, many of which are heard by a fellow combat controller and teammate of his and Delta Force operators on a nearby summit. Despite this combat controller's replies, Chapman never acknowledges whether because of damage to his equipment or himself will never be known. This new angle and footage shows Chapman at the top, identified by the green dot under the tree at Bunker 1. The lower center of the screen shows the first enemy fighter who is about to charge Chapman in the hopes of killing the American. The timestamp at the bottom shows it is now 6.05 in the morning and fully light. He's been fighting alone now for 40 plus minutes and has received more gunshot and shrapnel wounds as a result of the fierce combat. This scene shows the second of several enemy charges. In this stunning display of determination and courage, Chapman can be seen fighting hand-to-hand -hand with the fighter. In the larger screen display can be seen additional enemy moving on to the summit. But right now, John Chapman is fighting for his life. Six minutes later, in this new shot, Chapman can hear another helicopter approaching the summit. 
He is in the bottom center of the screen underneath the tree and can be seen in the magnified inset box as he begins his desperate final stand to save the lives of the 18 men on the helicopter. The red dots are enemy fighters. John begins engaging the enemy in multiple directions and is rapidly approaching the last of his ammunition. The helicopter contains a quick reaction force comprised of rangers, pararescue men, and another combat controller. It is now 6.13 and the helicopter is short final. The enemy is desperately trying to displace Chapman so they can put heavy weapons or rocket-propelled grenades in Bunker 1 while simultaneously engaging the helicopter. With the choice to save his life or the lives of his unknown comrades, Chapman makes the decision to climb out of the bunker and begin firing in multiple directions as can be seen in the inset. Suffering from as many as a dozen wounds, Chapman is in fact already in the process of dying. As he fights, the helicopter is struck by a rocket-propelled grenade and makes a remarkable controlled crash just below Chapman and the summit. Chapman, now off-screen, continues to cover his comrades as they pour out of the stricken helicopter. Some of them are fatally shot as they exit. These images, with Chapman fighting the enemy at I just went to retrieve a fallen comrade. Knocked unconscious, left. Fight until the bitter end. Like, even that hit, the helo goes down and. Close quarter are the last to show him alive and in this heroic act thus qualifying for his second Medal of Honor. Ultimately, Chapman would expend all but the last few rounds of his ammunition, until, finally, after 16 bullet and shrapnel wounds, Chapman succumbs when he is shot through the heart. We will never know his final thoughts or words, but what we do know is, his decisions and actions single-handedly saved the lives of 23 comrades. For more information about So not only does this take and rush a bunker occupied by enemy, takes both of them out before his team can even get there on a mission to retrieve a fallen comrade, he gets shot in the process twice. And then after they leave him, he comes to and he fights dozens of enemy by himself like here's the helo sees the helo tries to provide covering fire because uh, of course enemy sees helo they're going to be shooting at it even after it goes down with the control with the controlled crash, still fighting. It's just amazing to see. It's it's insane what somebody can accomplish. That's just, wow. 
you know, it's one thing reading everything, but whenever you see footage, and even it would be like he said, signatures and stuff like that. It's one thing reading, it's another thing watching. And just... Man, put up a hell of a fight. Lost his life, but... Did take and it did help save the lives of the tw of twenty three comrades. I mean, it's great God. So we don't have that most respect for the military and the people that serve in the military. Over here, there's a lot of folks that that look down on people that are in the military, or you got people, you know, you got liberals that don't. And I don't even like taking and using the label liberals, but uh, you've got you got people that just don't they take and see they they take and see the and they they take and see the the military as barbarians and stuff like that. I don't always agree with the missions. I don't always agree with. I don't. There's a lot of places I don't agree with us being. But these men that are taking, putting their lives on the line, a lot of them taking come from hard scrabble backgrounds where the only way out of their situation was the military. They're doing what they're, they're doing what they're told. They're doing what the orders are, lest they be court-martialed or basically wind up in the same situation they come out of. Like, I will never ever unless they are absolutely in the wrong for taking and doing orders or going outside the boundaries of their orders or unless the orders themselves were immoral to what rape stuff like that just you know murdering it just indiscriminate murder and stuff like that now talking about within the parameters or confines of a mission We should not have been in Afghanistan. We shouldn't have been in Iraq. But the boys that went over there, I don't care what country they're from, the boys that went over there, they got nothing but most respect. So, y'all be good to each other. Love yourselves. Peace.